All right, welcome back to the Grace Family Love Podcast. We are Joe and Vanessa back with you for episode number 43. Hey guys, I hope you guys are having a great week. It's good to have you guys back. Um, We wanted to just share um, a little bit about kind of what God's been doing and we kind of feel it in our heart that it's maybe something that you need to hear because I feel like God's been just highlighting it all over, all over. And he said he has such a humble way of just making you and reminding you of where you came from. So, you know, hopefully, you know, it will just inspire and help you. So thank you guys for joining us today. If you like what you hear, make sure to like, subscribe and share, especially because, you know, like if that's your way of helping somebody else. Hey, you know, why not just share with somebody that you think it might help? OK, so question rejection have you ever felt that have you ever felt that definitely when was the last time you felt it uh (laughs) i don't know maybe i would say i don't know dun 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 so i have one do you know why this podcast is here because of rejection you know that so and i'm gonna say that because somebody got rejected in order for me to have him (laughs) Somebody got rejected in order for him to have somebody else. So even the person that you might have right now, it might you might have them because of a rejection. And this doesn't just have to do with rejection with spouse. It can be rejection with a job. Mm, it can yeah. be rejection with um, even in a church you're in. It can be rejection even in your own, you know, family and your own like just anywhere, anyhow. You can have rejection. And the crazy part about it is that when we feel rejection, it just feels like a negative thing. But God uses that in order to kind of push us and puts us um, just in a different place. For sure. And he helps us grow through the process. Um, I was talking with two people this week that just gave me the definition of how God uses a rejection to really catapult you to a different place where you were like, you had no idea that you were going to be. Um, this week I was um, shopping for some merchandise that we wanted to purchase for our new merch. If you can see my bracelets over here. So we created some bracelets, some shirts for Grace Family Love, and we went to go, we were invited to sell them at a pop-up event. We had been thinking about, you know, creating merchandise and we just hadn't came around to it until somebody said, hey, we have a spot. Come join us. We're like, oh, like right now, like this month. And yeah, sure enough, we had to get everything ready. So as I'm passing by the aisles, I saw this book called Uninvited. So I just told God, like, no, it doesn't. You know, it's okay. I don't think I need it. God's like, get it. So I'm just like, okay, you know, that little voice inside. So I get it. And as I'm reading it while I'm at the pop-up event, somebody comes to me and says, oh, you're reading that book. And I'm just like, yeah, is it good? She's like, man, you have no idea. She's like, it's about a woman that um, she's a Christian woman. Her husband um, divorced her and left her just all of a sudden. And um, just she went through so much going on in this book. She didn't know that her husband was going to divorce her. So she's writing this part of rejection. In the second book, she's actually going through the divorce. In the third book, God restores her marriage. Hmm. So in these process, you're actually going through the process with her. And the crazy part about it is that the girl that I was talking to, she was also going through a divorce. She said that her husband um, or her, her fiance, actually, they were, you know, getting married, all that good stuff. Then he just one day said, nope, sorry, left. Wow. left her without nothing no money no nothing and just left so she goes you can imagine rejection like how i felt like i just didn't even know what to feel so if you've ever been in that place where you feel like man just am i not good enough like what is it why me like wh- what do i have that that person has or what do i not have or like we feel rejection as of a way of telling us we're not good enough. Yeah. When sometimes it's not personal. It really is not personal. It has nothing to do with your worth or who you are. 
Um, there's a verse in John 15, 18 that says, if the world hates you, keep in mind that he hated me first. So Jesus, like he was perfect. He was an amazing guy. People hated him. Like hate is a strong word. Yeah. Now imagine you like, so it doesn't have to do with your worth. It's just people's personal also growth. But God uses that rejection to kind of get you to where you need to be. You know, he really does. Yeah, not everybody is going to be on the same path that you are. And one of the things that, that we do, that we tend to do in relationships is we kind of tend to, to make the mistake of following our heart first or mm-hmm. allowing the emotion of it all to draw us in. And we seek that the validation from somebody else Mm -hmm. to help us believe that we are somebody of worth or that we are worth being with or that we have value because this other person chooses to be with us. The problem is just that when we are unsure of who we are or we just straight up don't know who we are, we constantly seek that validation from sources that are just as emotional as we are. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's going to be a really high, high moment. (laughs) Sometimes it's going to be a really low, low. And those highs and lows are really hard to manage if we are not sure of who we are or who we belong to or if we don't have Christ or God in our life, that a source of of strength, a source of um, stability, then we are just kind of tossed around, you know, just like a a leaf in the wind or or a wave in the ocean, just to and fro, back and forth. And and like Vanessa said, that word hate is a really strong word. However, I think it's a perfect descriptor for showing just how troubling it was that, that Jesus came to do this great thing yeah. for people out of love and still they rejected him. Yeah. And so just take that into account that even in spite of your best effort to do good things or do what you believe is right personally. Yeah. That doesn't mean that everybody's going to subscribe to to what (laughs) you're trying to do and to be in alignment with your goals and your visions. And at the time when you're when you're so passionate about something, when your heart is so invested in something, the the fact that someone else doesn't feel what you're feeling or someone else doesn't appreciate or isn't passionate about what you're passionate about, that can be devastating and that can hurt and that could feel like a terrible rejection. But in the end, you know, I don't know this person that you're talking to, you know, we don't have to talk about the name, but for somebody to be to, to get left or have their relationship fall apart before marriage as yeah. fiance, hindsight, right, is 2020 going through a divorce myself. I think at the time you're dating or your fiancés or you're committed and, and engaged. Yeah, that's a that's a great time to get to separate. That's a great time to to go and part and go your separate ways yeah. because you haven't had to go through all the, the investment and commitment yeah. of marriage and then have that institution that's supposed to be forever yeah. fall apart that I've been through that part. And that part is terrible. Yeah. It's excruciating. It's, it, it leaves these deep wounds. Um, and so I think that's a great thing. And, and I can't speak to how that person felt. I'm sure it was just as devastating. Yeah, Yeah, at the moment. However, you know, moving forward, that to me seems like, would you really want to be, if you were to have that that peek into the future, would you really want to be married to somebody that isn't fully invested the way that you are? Yeah. Would you really want to spend years of your life trying to convince somebody either that you're good enough to be with or that you have value or convince them that, that you have these great plans and ideas and hopes for your relationship and they just are like, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. They don't care. Like you wouldn't want to waste your time and, and hours and, and years of your life being with somebody that isn't all in the way that you are. Yeah. You know, and, and I was um, just, that's just like one of the, the ladies that I was also talking to had to do with divorce. I'm like, man, God, what's going on? So um, I was talking to another lady and she was telling me like, um, I ended up moving. She was from Texas and she ended up moving to California, back to California. 
and she was telling me like I don't know what to do like I I guess he doesn't my husband doesn't want to be with me he told me I just don't know how to keep moving forward I don't know how to just deal with the rejection I don't know what to do and the crazy part about it is that now she's in a place where she's thinking of she doesn't even drive so she's gonna get her license She's never even been on her own, her own like apartment. So she's like, I'm going to have my own apartment. She got married very young. So she's going to do all of these first things that she's never done. Why? Because of rejection. She's going to get to experience a lot of first in her life. And maybe something, the craziest part about this is that she has always dreamt of having a kid of her own because she's never had one and she can't have kids. And her husband said, I don't want to have kids. I don't want to, um, like, I, I don't. So even though that now, you know, she's div- she's going to get divorced, she's even thinking, maybe I can foster. Maybe I can adopt. But now even the desires of her heart are coming into play because of rejection. As crazy as that sounds. So just know that, yes, feel what you're feeling at the moment when somebody says no, when the door gets slammed in your face, when they tell you, I don't want you, like, I don't need you, whatever it is that you felt, know and feel those at the moment because, yeah, it stings, it hurts, but don't stay there. Don't keep those rejections like like a bracelet, you know, to, to remind you I'm not good enough because that's not what they're for. Yeah. That's not what it is for. Just let it go. Feel it because that hurt. But then just say, you know what? That doesn't determine my worth. That doesn't determine where I'm going. Because that means that door closed because it wasn't meant for me. That means that God has something else for me, someone else for me. And keep moving forward. If you keep holding on to that that sting, that bracelet, then you're never going to be able to keep moving forward where God wants you. And guess what? You're going to be keep running. You're going to keep running into that wall. Because that's not for you. It's not meant for you. So just let go, guys. Today, I wanted to just, I don't know, just remind you that the rejection, it's not about your worth. It has no, You have no idea where you're going. As we were sitting down, um, you know, selling our merchandise, it just dawned on me, you know, when I saw that, that three-year-ago video. I sat there and I remember day after day thinking like, God, what do you want from us? Like, what am I doing? Like, what are we doing? Like, I like I'm nothing. These people don't accept me. Accept me. Like, I don't. I don't know. Like, who am I? I didn't even know who I was. And God, little by little, just kept pushing me and kept moving me. And I had doors close on me left and right. We've had doors on us close, and just because of it, like we are where we're at, yeah. because God has pushed us to be here because of those closed doors. So I'm grateful for it, and I'm thankful for it. And even though it did hurt all along the way, you know, I've had to learn even till this day, Vanessa. It's not good to be holding on to those memories because guess what? You start putting bitterness in your heart. Yep towards those people, towards yourself, and it's not healthy. So let go. It's a personal decision to keep moving forward, knowing that there's something better. If you know that those people were a part of your history, pushing you to a great, like, I don't know, like this great dream, you'd be like, man, thank you for your rejection. That's awesome. (laughs) You know, like if he knew that him being rejected by his ex-wife would get him to have a um, a different wife i'm just gonna say that then he would have been like okay you know thank you for it was great knowing you we had a, a great how many years were you guys married uh, about a little over four you know thank you for those four years thank you for my son i appreciate you and you know move on a little bit quicker you know same thing for me but i didn't know that so you know the more thing the more you hold on to it it just it hurts guys it stings so let go, let God bring healing, and just let God continue to push you to where he needs to take you. I know for me personally, it's, you know, rejection does hurt. And I think that now that I am where I am in life, I've noticed that the rejection many times is another opportunity. And it seems like it's it's a tool that that is used in life, like God uses that and, and allows us 
to be reminded like, hey, we need God. Mm -hmm. You know, like God is a source of not just like strength, right, of of hope, light, those kinds of things. But he's also a comfort. And that is one of the most fundamental um, elements of of having a relationship with Jesus is just Mm -hmm. having the opportunity to be to have the Holy Spirit in your heart and be what he was designed to be for us right to to be a guide to show us right and wrong and remind us of when we're on the wrong track and remind us of of what we should be doing and and bring kind of like this i guess like a a healthy conviction to make sure we stay on the right path but more than anything jesus said that he was going to send us a comforter and that's one of the the most for me personally the most inspiring It's the most, I want to say comforting, but I don't want to keep using the same word comfort, but I don't, I don't know any better way to say it than this consuming feeling that overcomes all of my emotion and allows me to be completely vulnerable and at the same time be okay with the situation, even though it hasn't changed yet. Yeah. Because there are times where I feel broken. There are times where I feel vulnerable. There are times where I feel rejected. There are times where I feel less than. There are times where I feel like I'm not good enough. And all those things we tend to kind of ball up into this um, this consuming emotion that makes us just want to hide under a rock or die or, yeah. or, or be depressed or just close ourselves in a room and not see anybody. When the truth of the matter is, is it's in those times that we have an opportunity to return and go back to God, you know, draw yeah. near to God and receive the comfort that he has for us. And even when we don't have the words, yeah. He's there. Even when we don't understand the situation, he's there. Even though we have no idea how on earth this is going to turn out for our good, like we have no clue. But that doesn't even matter at that moment because we can just be in God's presence and be comforted. And that in and of itself, it allows me personally to to have these emotions subside, the the angst, the, the fear, the the yeah. doubt the insecurity all of that is just quieted down and that peace that surpasses all understanding that the bible yeah. talks about it kind of just overcomes everything that i'm feeling and allows me to refocus and rethink about the promises that god has yeah. for me and so i would just encourage you that even when you just feel like there's just no hope this is it this is over this is the end that rejection and it's just overwhelming yeah. you just go into God's presence, pray a completely honest prayer yeah. and let God know exactly how you're feeling and allow the Holy Spirit in you to just move in your heart, yeah. move in your mind to give you a moment of just peace of mind where your your emotions are subside have subsided, where your yeah. thoughts are just can stop for just a moment and just take control of those things and just be still and know that God is with you and allow in that moment as everything kind of subsides, you allow yourself to refocus, remember God's promises for your life and remember that he is with you. He is for you. And there's another opportunity that God, another chance, another opportunity. God is going to use this situation for your good and open doors that you had no idea were opening because we were consumed with emotion to show you that there's a way out that you couldn't see because you were overwhelmed yeah. or struck in with, with struck with fear and you were paralyzed and you didn't want to go anywhere or do anything. And those things that God is, is, is shaping us for. Yeah. I truly believe that God hears our prayers and he wants to bless us and he wants to do these great and amazing things in us and through us. But a lot of times we're just not ready to receive it. Yeah. And if God gave us today what we were praying for today, chances are we could break it, destroy it, misuse it, and just totally take it for granted. But if there's a struggle that comes along with achieving or attaining, receiving that prayer, then we appreciate it and we value it that much more. If If God has time to prepare us to receive what he's got for us, then at that time we will be spiritually, emotionally, and sometimes just mentally mature enough yeah. to handle it with loving care and use it for his glory and for his purpose yeah so that's it guys that's all we got we love you guys we hope that you guys have a great week and um just if you have any any comments or any questions or just anything that you want to share with us you know you can message us on facebook 
on Instagram. Um, you can go, I was say old school and email us, but I mean, it's not old school. Um, but yeah, you can just message us. I would, we would love to hear from you. Keep hearing from you guys. We love you guys. Yeah, and, and I'll, we'll say a prayer real quick, but I'll definitely leave um, a link in the description below if you're interested in, in reading that book. And uh, just for fun, I'll leave a, a link to to this song that I used to listen to that used to kind of get me through some of the beginning things in our relationship that oh. I thought was funny. <laughs> <laughs> but you can check it out. Okay. All right, guys. You pray? Uh, sure. Okay. God, we, we just we thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, we just thank you for our friends on the other end. I just ask that you just be with them in this moment, helping them to understand, Lord, the moments where they were rejected and the moments that they've been holding on for far too long. I ask you in this moment, Lord, that they be able to just release it and just give it to you and know that those rejections are going to be part of their journey, a part of where you're going to take them to, that they're just going to be something that's going to be a memory of where you also Show them your faithfulness, your favor, your mercy. I ask that in this moment, Lord, if they had a hard week, that you just give them peace, that you give them that that understanding, knowing that you are in control and that you're going to have everything taken care of if they only just hand it over to you and completely release it to you. In the name of Jesus, bless them, watch over their family, yes. watch over their, their health, and just be with them throughout this week. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Bye, guys. See ya.